Recently, a physician mentioned to me that essential oils are nothing more than good smelling placebos. I know a ton of clinicians that have this same opinion, but my concern is, is that we haven't really done a ton of research about how essential oils affect our patients and our lack of knowledge could be a patient safety risk. The fact of it is it takes a degree of compassion in order to discipline yourself to research cultural and alternative medicines. Why do I say it takes compassion? Well, the fact of it is millions of patients are using essential oils, whether you like it or not. If you ask your patients about their cultural and alternative medicine uses, they'll tell you what they're using. But if we don't have the knowledge to answer their questions, we lack compassion for the elderly woman who wonders if using lavender essential oil at night will interact with her sleeping medicine. We lack compassion for the parents of a child with epilepsy who's concerned that diffusing basil into the air might trigger a seizure. We lack compassion for the patient who has both irritable bowel syndrome and heartburn and wonders if peppermint essential oil can do harm or may even help. When we can't answer these questions, we, we make our patients feel like they don't matter. We come across that we can't collaborate and negotiate and discuss data related to cultural and alternative medicines. Here's a series of questions that I hope will help the clinicians watching this understand why it is important for each and every one of us to have some information about essential oils so that we ensure that we keep our patients safe. Number one, which of the following essential oils is most likely to cause phototoxicity? Is it peppermint essential oil because of the menthol chemical constituent? Or maybe it's bergamot essential oil because of the furano coumarins. Could it be lavender because of the linalool and the linalil acetate? For a patient who lives in the south, for a patient who lives near the beach, this is a critically important safety point that we should be prepared to educate people about alongside educating people about the importance of sunscreen and protective clothing to help prevent the risks of skin cancer. Here's another question. Can grapefruit essential oil be used alongside statin medicines or does it interact in the same way as grapefruit juice? If we don't know and research the answer to that, we may just say, oh yeah, don't use that grapefruit essential oil. It might cause a drug interaction. But does it? Does it really? Are the chemical constituents in grapefruit juice similar or different to grapefruit essential oil? Very important for all of your patients that are taking statin medicines. What about number three? Wintergreen essential oil has some known side effects. Which one of these is a known side effect of wintergreen essential oil? Does it increase the risk of bleeding in, pa in patients who are taking warfarin? Or maybe it increases the risk of Ray's syndrome in children. Maybe it increases the risk of systemic salicylate toxicity. Which of these is a known side effect of wintergreen essential oil? Or is it all of them? And we need to actually educate people about each of these side effects. I also take issue with clinicians claiming that essential oils are nothing more than good smelling placebos because there are many over-the-counter medicines approved by the FDA that contain chemical constituents of essential oils as active ingredients. Which of the following over-the-counter medicines contains a chemical constituent from an essential oil as an active ingredient? Is it Hall's cough suppressant drops? Or is it Bengay pain relief cream? Or is it chloroseptic spray? Or is it all three? When we don't research, we don't know. And we can't educate our patients effectively. Last question. 
Which of the following essential oils increases the systemic absorption of 5-fluorouracil and therefore increases the risk of 5-FU toxicity? Is it peppermint, frankincense, lavender, oregano, tea tree, lemon, orange, tangerine? Which of these essential oils can cause a risk of harm in patients who are using 5-fluorouracil? The fact of it is when we can't answer these questions, we come across as stubborn and obstinate. And we come across as someone that patients don't want to work with because the patients feel like their health care decisions are not valued by their care provider. It's critically important that we educate our patients and that we listen when they choose to use herbs, supplements, essential oils. And it's critical that every clinician knows at least the basics of what can cause harm in patients. If you continue to dislike essential oils, if you continue to dissuade your patients from using them because you think that they might be harmful or because you think that they're simply not helpful, that's fine. I am a-okay with you as a clinician making the decision that is right for your practice, but I implore you to do it with information under your belt. We can no longer march forward and be obstinate and stubborn and ignorant about cultural and alternative medicine because it puts our patients at risk. If you've never talked to someone about using essential oils or cultural and alternative medicine, here's some tips that you can follow to help you understand your patient's perspective. If you disagree with them, that is okay. But it is important that we listen and understand. First, ask people what they are taking. They will tell you. When we don't ask, we face a whole slew of unknowns regarding the safe use of medicines because the fact of it is there are drug interactions that we need to take into account. We need to understand how essential oils, herbs, supplements interact with medicines. So be sure to ask. When people ask, the most common complaint I get is that clinicians either make fun or they say they don't work or they say, mm, I don't know anything about it. All three of these are unacceptable answers in my opinion. We must know something about it. We cannot consistently say, oh, they don't work, just whatever. And we also can't make fun of our patients' healthcare decisions because ultimately it's their healthcare decision and they're paying you to be in the room with them to help guide and educate and mentor them on how to live their ideal life. So instead of saying, I don't know, you're an idiot patient, or saying, meh, whatever, they just don't work, explain the science. Explain what you know. And if you don't know, Commit to your patient that you will do five minutes of research to find out. There are hundreds and thousands of articles inside PubMed that can help guide you and guide your opinions about how essential oils, herbs, and supplements can be used alongside typical Western medicines. Number three, be respectful and non-judgmental. It's really important that your patients feel like they are valued. Here is my top tip. Collaborate with your patients. You may say, uh, I don't think lavender essential oil is going to help you if you use it on the bottoms of your feet at night. I think you're a little bit kooky for doing it. But if you genuinely don't think that it's going to cause harm, What's the, what's the foul? Allow the patient to make that decision. Allow them the space to go, you know what? I don't know how peppermint essential oil is going to affect you. 
Why don't we do a trial of one week where you rub it on your stomach every time you eat a meal and you keep track and you come back and tell me how you feel. Work with your patients to reach compromise. Compromise with them and negotiate. There are times that I will tell patients, people in my following, I will tell them, this is dangerous, do not do it. I will tell people point blank, do not use this herb if you are around the time of giving labor. It has caused major harm. But the fact of it is, it's up to me to convince the person of why I am telling them no. It cannot be just no. Let's all work together to reach a collaborative agreement between clinicians and patients that makes us all feel like we're on the same page, that we have the same goals in mind, and that we know that the patient is kept safe.